I want to talk about the myth of Pandora's box. And the myth of Pandora's box is a story about, you know, how curiosity killed the cat, about how intelligence is a required trait that, you know, that you need to go through suffering in order to get to the end, which contains the fruit that you were fighting for. So Pandora's box, the story of Pandora's box begins way before Pandora is even born. So before Pandora is even born, Zeus and the other Olympians had just had a war with all the Titans. Now the Titans were punished. The Titans lost the war because of the strategies of Athena and Nike and Zeus. So Zeus sent most of the Titans to be suffering in Tartarus, which is like the underworld of the Greek uh, reality, of the Greek mythology world. So there was two that well, there was a few that were unpunished, and two of those were Prometheus and Epimetheus. Prometheus means forta. He means thinking of the future. He means being always five moves ahead on the chessboard while you're still going to the store to buy one. Now his brother Epimetheus, he's the exact opposite of Prometheus. He thinks about things after he's done them. He just does things, and then later on he realizes what it all meant. So you have forethought and afterthought with these two brothers. Now, Prometheus loved humans. Prometheus was already in the idea that humans are part of his responsibility. So he stole fire from Zeus and gave it to mankind. He gave it to men. He gave it to the people on the earth who were just roaming around like the animals because Epimetheus was in charge of making the natural world on, on the world in the earth and animals and all animalistic type beings. So when Prometheus was making humans, he wanted them to be better than just animals. He wanted to, them to be able to think. He wanted them to, to start civilizations. So he thought if they have a gift of the gods, which is fire that he could physically transport and hand it to them, then they can become the great beings that he always wanted them to be. Zeus found out, Zeus got mad, Zeus decided to punish him. So now every day Prometheus is laying on a rock with his arms chained up and a vulture comes down and it eats his liver from ripping his stomach out and he has to suffer through that. And then when the, when the bird is done, it flies away and Prometheus, his entire body forms again. Everything that was ripped out forms again overnight. So then every morning, the next morning, that bird comes right back again to eat. And then it's a never-ending cycle that keeps on going. So that was his punishment for disobeying the law of Zeus. Now, all of this makes sense later on. All of this starts piecing the puzzles together for the story of Pandora's box. Now, Hephaestus, the son of Zeus, said, well, Zeus told Hephaestus, let's make a woman. Because as at that point, it was just mankind. They said it was just men walking around in the world. So Zeus said, let's make a woman. But he didn't say it just to be nice. He didn't say it just because he wanted to make a woman. He said it because he already started scheming of things, you know? Zeus always thinks ahead, similar to Prometheus. So he had Hephaestus, and there's different stories. Some stories say Hephaestus blew um, fire from his, from his voice and he made... Pandora. Other other stories say that he molded her out of clay, and when he when she was made, the gods came and then Zeus told everyone like let's let's give her gifts, let's give her all these things that we can give her to make her beautiful, benevolent, and of godly creation. So Athena gave her the the you know the the craftiness to be able to make stuff. Hermes, I believe, gave her the the idea to be able to speak to the, the magic of language and Aphrodite gave her part of her beauty and her essence that she was this beautiful woman and she was the first woman ever made. Now Zeus gave her a box, the, the infamous Pandora's box and he told her do not open it. This is not for mankind. He's like I'm gonna give you this gift but I don't want you to see inside of it. Like what kind of person does kind of, you know who, who does that? So she accepted it and Prometheus always warned his brother Epimetheus, do not accept anything from Zeus, do not take any physical presence because he still wants to get back at us. He still doesn't like us as brothers. Even though I did him wrong, we are shunned as a family. So he doesn't like me and you because we're related and connected and close. And Epimetheus was like, okay, brother, oh, sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna heed away from anything that Zeus tries to give me. 
And when, when Zeus presented Pandora to Epimetheus, or other stories say that they met on their own will, you know, Epimetheus didn't think about the idea that, you know, introducing yourself to someone, introducing somebody to you is a gift, you know, even if it's not tangible. You know, you making connections with somebody else and, and forming those bridges of, of networking is a nice way of showing someone that you care about them. Um, so, and it's similar to a gift. So Epimetheus did not see the foresight in Pandora being made by all these gods that they just had a war with. And so they meet and Epimetheus with all of the, all the beautiful things that Pandora wields, he thought she was beautiful and amazing. And they hit it off and they start talking and they end up forming a relationship. Now, Pandora grabs her box and she goes and moves in with Epimetheus and they're living in their, in their world. And one day when Epimetheus isn't there, the, 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 the curiosity of the box just sitting there and staring at her every day and a gift from the god of gods, from Zeus, the head honcho, the lightning king. She was like, I really want to open this box. And who wouldn't? You know, you don't, you can't blame her. So over time, this idea eats at her and gnaws at her. And she, she eventually gives in and she says, you know what, I'm going to take a peek. I'm going to take a little small crack, open it up and see what's inside, but I'm not going to fully open it. And, you know, the infamous story goes that she, she approaches the box and she opens it. And, and upon opening this box, after she cracks it open just a little bit, it bursts open and plague and disease and disaster and famine and all of these things that mankind sh has never been exposed to rushes out of the box and flies into the world and starts plaguing all the cre crevices and corners of mankind. Now, Pandora freaks out and she doesn't know what to do, so she sh shuts the box. And not knowing that at the bottom of the box there was hope, you know, the, the one key ingredient that humans needed to combat this onslaught of, of negative energy. Um, some stories say that she opened it right away. I've heard other stories where she waits a little bit and then she opens it, but but the main story is that she opens the box completely at the end and she lets out hope and that gives humans a fighting chance against all this evilness that was just exposed to them. And this gives mankind the age that we're in now where we have all these things going on but we also have the tools to fight the evil. So that's the, the famous story of Pandora's box and many people nowadays because their minds are so focused on the biblical stories that that took over you know the world they they attribute all these ideas of pandora to you know adam and eve who was told not to eat from the knowledge the the fruit of the tree of knowledge and her curiosity got to her she was told by the state to go do it and she does it and because of that mankind gets punished you know women are forced to have children while men are forced to work the tills all day and they get you know, I think it's, I don't know if it's both of them, but I know that Adam for sure gets cast out of the Garden of Eden and told never to return. He cannot. And it, there's a lot of parallels between it, for sure. There's a lot of ideas that are very similar about how curiosity can lead to dangerous things. And 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 I think a lot of people start thinking about it as, as pointing fingers and saying, women caused pain and suffering. It's because of women that were like this. It's because of the curiosity of women and Nobody ever starts, stops and not think about the gender in it. What if someone just says, okay, besides the fact that Pandora and Eve were a woman, what about the idea that it's just people? It's just humans. It's just knowledge takes suffering. There's not going to be anything that you obtain without suffering. And the, the fulfillment that you get from pursuing something that's, that causes suffering is the end of the road, it's the final destination, it's the thing at the bottom of the box, it's finishing that bachelor's degree and getting your education, it's finishing the, you know, whatever it is you're trying to do, a new skill that you're trying to learn, it's gonna be rough and difficult at first, but at the end of it, you're gonna actually be a better person and have this new skill set. You know, it's learning how to how to adapt and, and grab all these new things in life, and we've, even if it's social skills, mental fortitude, if it's physical fitness, this new journey that you embark on, it's going to be hard throughout the entire process until you get to the very end and you're considered a master. Until you get to the very end and you're considered a person who can do it and make it look effortlessly. And I think 
me personally, I think that's the main idea of the story because you even see parallels in it with Odin in Norse mythology he plucks out his own eyeball and throws it into the well of knowledge in order to drink and be able to have infinite wisdom. Now, he, you know, the stories could have just been that he drank from it. The stories could have just been that he learned everything on his own, but they, every single story that involves learning and curiosity and, and wisdom shows some sort of physical, emotional, or mental drainage, some, some sort of suffering, some sort of plagues in, from Pandora's box. And I think they all really tell a story of how, you know, ancient civilizations, because these are were, these were really old stories, how they saw the, the beauty in learning something new. They saw the beauty in going through suffering, the, the, the white to the other side of darkness, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, the yin to the yin, the yin to the yin, all of these other metaphors. But I think that that's what the main story of Pandora's box means. And even though times do get hard, you got to maintain that hope at the end of it and push through and persevere and fight through all those monsters that were released out in, in order to get to that final destination. And that was the original light at the end of the tunnel story. And I think it's very beautifully put. But anyway, if you like it, this video, consider subscribing and liking. And I'll see you guys next time.